Um, so yeah, welcome to the March monthly community call of frictionless data. Uh, again, this month, uh, our focus is going to be the spec update. Um, I'm going to share in the chat the agenda talk where we'll be also we're, um, collecting the uh, taking notes. Um, there's a list of items that I put there um, that we sort of like um, decided upon together with Afghani. Please feel free to add anything that uh, you think we should discuss today. Um, and maybe we can just um, kick it off with uh, just uh, a mention about versioning. So this is something that we were talking about in the last call. Um, and we all agreed that versioning is something that we want to implement for version two. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, Evgeny at the moment is working on a more detailed proposal, uh, which is on its way. Um, so if that's all right for everyone, um, this is, of course, a topic that will be included in version two, but maybe it could be uh, easier to discuss this um, in the next community call once we have that more detailed proposal. And... Um, so the other thing that we wanted to announce is also that we're getting very closer to uh, the version 2 initial draft, uh, let's say. So uh, besides versioning, there is uh, only a few items that are left on the list of things to do. And one of the things that we have is um, kind, um, a few issues that I put in there as well on table dialect. Uh, and maybe we wanted to explore with you how we want to kind of like divide that kind of work. If anyone here is also interested in taking on part of it. Um, yeah. Okay, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Um, I can hear me. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so currently, yeah, again, as always, we start the call from like saying thanks to like everyone. Also, the like hard work you put into the version two of the data package because I think we made like huge progress. We closed like around 30 issues already, which been a, which, which had been kind of like a tech depth for us five years. Specs being like not really maintained, but previous leadership. So um, currently when it's uh, more collaborative, I think it's, it's really good going now. So, um, but uh, according to the uh, project like timeline, uh, we need to finish kind of like draft version by this month, by the end of this month. So it's pretty like flexible what we include in the draft, what we don't. So I just uh, kind of like split. I basically just moved a few issues to the uh, final release milestone version to final. Uh, and the main one there is basically, basically there is one issue there for now, it's versioning. The thing we discussed last uh, last time. And uh, uh, there, there are like four issues, four different issues for it, but basically it's it's one, one, one matter. And uh, if it's possible, maybe I hope we can finish a few more pull requests like this and next week, hopefully like table dialect, which I, would like ask you to maybe kind of like put some um, effort maybe next week if, if we can finish it, but it's not critical. And then uh, I think we will have next two, or, I don't know, Sarah's, uh, Sarah can correct me, like two, three months to completely finish version two. And uh, at the part of version to like draft, I will prepare change work, incorporate uh, Peter's um, uh, versioning things into the uh, governance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we will have basically um, everything ready to be released, but we will have like uh, more time to finish the, the rest and uh, to review everything. Sarah. Yeah. No, I think the timeline is correct. Um... So, uh, yeah. Yeah, let me share the, the links. Yes, exactly, Peter. So that's the link to the draft. Uh, but then if you go on milestones, there is also one, which is the V2 final um, roadmap. And so, yeah, exactly. So as Evgenia has just said, the 
kind of like tentative um, deadline for the draft would be um, kind of like beginning of April at some point, knowing that, of course, this is flexible. And then the final uh, would be um, somewhere, as we said in the beginning in the announcement blog, it would be around June. Peter, yes. Um, I noticed that the issue on categorical data is, or I'm missing it, is not in the draft or the final one. How do issues get promoted to one of the two milestones? Um, so, yeah, so as we discussed, it kind of like depends on resourcing and the, the general idea that uh, going forward, you know, the kind of like the people, entity, whatever, like working on the release, this uh, kind of like see on the popularity of the issue, decide like what takes to the work and what don't. But uh, for, for now, I think we just move, can move uh, the categorical one to the uh, release if it's kind of like uh, decided like important by the by the group. Um, so I'll do it now. Uh, and yeah, and going forward, uh, I hope we will be using the like watching mechanism on the on the issues uh, we shared like a few calls ago. And maybe just to add on what Evgeny said, of course, these calls are also a place to um, kind of like leverage that. And for example, if there is an issue or something or a feature that you really want to advocate for, um, then that's definitely like this place is definitely a place to discuss this and to bring it up. Um, yeah, so that as, as you just did, Peter, so that other people can vote and then the, the issue can be elevated. Yes, Dan. Um, sorry if this is a beginner question or something. I was wondering, is the table dialect, is that different than CSV dialect? I'm not familiar with that concept, if it is different. Evgen, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so um, table dialect basically is a superset of uh, CSV dialect and uh, it's basically CSV dialect with like new options, like better defined. Uh, uh, there is already like a demo uh, deployment on the um, data package website I can share now. Um, but the idea that uh, it's uh, kind of like interoperable with CSV dialect, even like back and forward compatible if it's supported by the software. But uh, the, the main goal behind the table dialect that basically it's finally can resolve this problem that it's been like 10 years without like an ability to specify Excel sheet or uh, something, things like not related to CC, but like critical for uh, data packages. Would it include SQL information if your resource is like a SQL database? Um, it will. Um, I don't know if it's now included, um, but it, it uh, friction spy supports table, and uh, I think it's not included now. But if you think it makes sense, uh, we can add it as well. But it's uh, for SQL. Yeah, it's more like I'm just trying to understand the scope mostly, but I think it makes sense. Um, thanks. I'll I'll read more. But uh, in general, yeah, the idea that uh, table dialect is kind of like common, uh, common language to just share the information about different dialects, and it's I think the the spirit of this is a it's the least strict specs of uh, all them. So basically, if your software supports something, it supports. If not, okay, it's not. But it's at least kind of like an attempt to have this uh, dictionary of uh, common. Uh, configurations for formats. So, and yeah, so I, ha I had a draft uh, which had like a table, but I think I just removed to reduce scope, but we can 
you know, add it now or maybe later if it's requested. Yeah. Jenny, do you have specific issues for people here in the call that you remember, like you are a bottleneck for this issue and you should look at it? Um, so yeah, I think the good thing that currently we don't have like 40 issues, so we can discuss if, uh, and maybe ask Sarah if we have something else and we can like spend uh like sometimes just going way through low level things uh, i'd like to ask sarah um i don't have anything very urgent to discuss um beside table dialect which was the main thing so if you want to go uh with like task lists can okay, you go ahead okay, thank you yes we're getting the preview it's um okay. It's here. Um yeah, so um we can we can sort current proposals by amount of votes we had and uh, basically um, for now it's uh, yeah so so the first one I think the contributor roles uh, proposal which for me seems to be kind of like um, uh, kind of like good to go and like I don't see like any blockers but uh, maybe just uh, we need some attention uh, from the rest of the group, uh, maybe maybe you can discuss it now. So, what do you think is either a blocker or reasons not to uh, just consider it as a kind of like um, kind of good change or at least important for someone? Because I I don't like. Sorry, Sorry Evgeny, I'm just uh, yeah. sharing the screen. Yeah, this, so can yeah see. thank you. <laughs> Yeah, you scared me. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, this one and um, yeah, per personally, uh, I, I'm not a data, data publisher, so I, I'm not sure whether it's like to what extent is good or not. It's for me, it's like from a technical standpoint and seems to be kind of like okay. So uh, maybe we just discuss it now. What do you think? Phil, I see you still have a thumbs down on that one. It has gone through a lot of changes, so it might be good if you could give this just the files another look and well, see if I you have any objections. I will definitely do that. I had forgotten actually the, the reason for my original, so I'll, I will do that right now. Thank you, Peter. Um, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe also if someone who uh, like your neutral, also if you can take a look, it will be great. And uh, uh, Sarah, yeah, the next one, um, yeah, that's a big, important, interesting one, uh, schema fields match or like virtual schemas, I think uh, kind of like the close. And Peter uh, created kind of like really great proposal uh, regarding like new uh, semantics. So um, I think it's now kind of kind of like on my side to update um, the uh, like uh, possible options for it. If uh, I don't know if someone has some uh, comments on the way we're going now with this fields match that can be. Uh, 
at least a few now, I think we're going to for like four options. Uh, field match can be um, exact, uh, superset, subset, and partial as a first step to create like more flexible schemas. Yeah, Peter. So yeah, for, for people who are just new to this issue, this is about matching a schema with the data. Uh, so far, schemas have always been matched with the data, as in you need to have them in the same order and you need to have the same amount of fields. Um, there were some options in Frictionist framework to go around this. Um, and yeah, the proposal is now supporting five different use cases. The one that is currently there, exact, as in same order, same amount of fields. Okay. The equal, same amount of fields, but the order doesn't matter. That is an edge, that is a use case that might be edge, but if somebody has this case, please okay. respond to the issue. Um, and then the typical one where you allow to have more fields in the data than are in the schema, but you need to have all fields in the schema. Or the other way around, you have a huge schema with lots of options, but you only want to select some of them and you don't allow them to invent their own fields. That is the superset and the subset. Um, and the final one is partial as in, yeah, you can have some fields of the schema, you can add some more, you don't need to have them all. So that's the most loose option. Um, this is what I consider the, the five theoretical use cases, but I think it will depend a bit on which ones are out there in the wild and if we need to support them all. I can think of, yeah, options to support them all. I don't think on the implementers it's going to be that much of a burden and having the options available, yeah, also allows to support use cases that uh, we are not super aware of right now. Um, so, yeah, that's a a bit of a summary of what this thing is proposing. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Peter. Um, Kyle, you have your hand raised. Do you want to react to that? Yeah, I was I was just wondering how often it is that we have um, data sets for which we're uh, specifying just a couple of fields in the schema, and then there's a bunch of extra fields in the data that are um, uh, basically un, untyped. Um, and so I'm, I guess that that's where I'm a little bit un, uh, uncomfortable with with having all of these different options where um, I, I don't want I'm I'm concerned about sort of encouraging schemas. Uh, yeah, encouraging having um, lots of untyped fields in uh, being produced by data producers, if that makes so, sense. So is this the partial you're discussing? Um, so partial, it's included in partial. It's also. Um, let me see. And in, in, uh... it's also a subset, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I guess my 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 main thought is that when we have schemas that aren't matching our data, so in in my mind, a schema is something that describes the data that we have. So it would always um, be a one to one match with the data that we have, and then the use case of um, of having schemas that are larger, but then we use subsets of those fields, that seems like a separate uh, a separate feature where we'd want to have like libraries of fields that then our schemas could reference. Um, and so our schema could still would still have the field names of all of the uh, columns in our data, but then those columns would then reference the library that's uh, Put out by the producer, and I and I realize that you know having the sub you know ha having the, the the way that we're doing it right now is is a smaller change from um, what we currently have, and so this gives like the flexibility in order to to do that um, with a minimal amount of changes. But I'm just sort of thinking to the future if what we if what we really want is the capability to have producers uh, uh, give release libraries of field types, which then can be referenced. I feel like that um, that should be by a different mechanism, if that makes sense. Um, sorry, I'm sharing, so I, I lost my hand. I don't know how to raise it. Oh. <laughs> so, so just sorry if I, I'm just, it's not my order. Uh, just, just wanted to comment on things like subset 
or partial. Uh, so um, as like table schema is kind of like uh, you need also uh, kind of like you need also thing for many like applications. Uh, I think things like subset was like really really like uh, uh, requested and uh, missing in terms of thinking about of table schema as a kind of like view function. So uh, you having like ability to specify just a few um, fields from the like table. Uh, it's not about validation, it's about kind of like data access. So basically, and I think it was like really important use case for uh, Paul Walsh's uh, like company and comments uh, from like uh, months ago regarding this. Uh, so basically, if we have subset of partial stuff, we will be able to access like some fields from uh, really big tables, for example. And uh, it's um, again, I'm not like exactly like a data publisher or data like engineer, but I think it's kind of like really critical for many cases uh, when you just need to access basically random access on 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 the like data fields. Um, Dan, I see that you also have your hand raised. Yeah, I would mostly echo everything Evgeny just said. I mean, the one of the way, like we're, it's a sort of an edge case, I guess, but you know, we're, we're using the frictionless table spec as a way to implement data dictionaries in our, uh, I work on the DCAN data portal software. Um, so this, the partial use case is one of our like, live use cases that we're working towards where there's a government agency that has a bunch of data sets that there are some fields that are in all the data sets. And when they have that name, we know that they have this particular specification, but um, we can't really get their commitment to always have the same columns in every data set. Um, so I guess I think of it kind of like, I mean, in that case, I guess it fits more with like a chase, like a, data dictionary than a table schema in the way we usually talk about these things. But I guess if you think of JSON schema, it's very permissive in the same way where you can you can say like, oh, it can't have any more fields than the ones defined here. Or you could also use it to say, well, if it has these fields, they need to be like this, but it can also have anything else. So yeah, I, I think this is kind of perfect for the different ways that um, I can see using this. Thanks, Dan. Um, Phil, I think you were the next one with your hand raised. Yeah, just briefly, um, I I don't know if this is the same case that Dan was just describing, but um, we also have a, a live use case um, and it, it basically has to do with data harmonization. So we have a platform where uh, people have loaded uh, lots of um, essentially what amount to schemas. I mean, they are a proper uh, superset, but they are consistent with a frictionless uh, ta table schema um, for uh, specific measures of various kinds, you know, half a dozen items, something like that, but in standard sort of ways. And those are all accessible on the web. So when a person has their own data set and is wanting to harmonize it and then validate they did the harmonization correctly, uh, what we're wanting them to do, and we accomplish it now with a little bit of wrapping, but it would be nice if this was kind of a formal part. Um, what we want them to do is, is basically they're sitting there, they have their data set, that, that is a superset of the, you know, of the measure that they're wanting to, to harmonize and then validate against. Um, and so we want them to be able to validate against that schema. And that's, I believe that's the partial corresponds to the partial case in this instance. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Um, Jonathan, I see that you are the next one, but Evgeny, I don't know if you quickly wanted to react to that. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, so uh, just uh, yeah, just regarding a subset, because for me it feels like uh, the most important addition. Um, just uh, some context, I think in in France, uh, uh, yeah, and also uh, sorry, I, I can see the participants now, but. Uh, if someone uh, working on this. So uh, 
the idea the basically is uh, getting to uh, table schemas as kind of like a uh, small like governmental uh, requirements on uh, basically laws on data. So basically, if uh, kind of like uh, some agency needs uh, like buses, data on transport, something, so they create a table schema and uh, they require so that the that, that data needs to have like these three columns, these types, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it's kind of like a small data law uh, for this uh, uh, kind of like a domain in this country. And uh, as a data publisher, uh, you might add like comments to this uh, data. You might add uh, like other information, but basically there is a contract and having this sub uh, subset thing, basically we can have contract on table schema level. So uh, there is a guarantee that in the data, there is a, like these three columns required by, for example, this agency or like the law, I don't know. So. Yeah, Sarah, sorry. No, thanks for that. Um, Jonathan. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think the key distinction for me is that the data publisher, the person who actually produces the CSV is often different entity than the person that is creating the data package and the, the data package.json schema that references it. And so, yeah, in a perfect world, everybody would just produce their own schemas, uh, but that's that's not the reality. Um, Evgeny and then Kyle. Oh, no, sorry. Okay. okay, then Kyle. Um, yeah, I would just say that the main limitation of this approach is that we can't, um, if so, I'm, I'm also interested in, uh, this for, uh, use in data dictionaries, like, uh, Dan was talking about, um, and what we can't do uh, th this forces us to have uh, the the publishers release schemas, which then, when we use them in our data, um, or when we use them in our data package, we have to use the same um, names of the um, variables that that we're using. So we can't have like types that we're referencing. So like if there's a a pain scale or something like that, and we have five questions that are using um, this uh, pain scale definition with corresponding validations, we can, we have to use the same um, variable name. We don't have that extra level, like it, it's not a, um, uh, it, it, it doesn't a, a give us that sort of data dictionary functionality where we're like, oh, I want to use this definition of this type and this definition of this type as um, variables in, in this current schema that I'm building, if that makes sense. So we're, we're forced to use whatever naming conventions by that external entity, which I can see is useful for like government packages and, and stuff like that. But um, for the data dictionary type um, situations, it's really useful to be able to have a library of types that then we can um, reference. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. I don't know, Peter, did you want to react to that? Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious. This is about you have a field and you have certain values that inhabit that field that are controlled as in they have associated information as in the whole categorical information. Um, I think for that one, it is useful that for a field you can link out to vocabularies. I have the same problem with the enum. So in the CamTrap DB for the camera trap data, for some fields we have uh, currently in our schema, we define these are the only enum values that you can use, but I would actually like to be able to define more enum values or have at least definitions and maybe store that information elsewhere. Do mm -hmm. you think that is a solution to do that on a field level? So you, you, so you have- Was your... that a question to, to me? Or, yeah, to um, you. To okay, me. yeah. Yeah, so I I think I think we should be able to make named. So I I wrote this up in a little bit of a proposal type thing um, that I can link to. But um, I I think the the generalized solution to what it is that we're after here is the ability to create a library of named field types, basically. And so then a publisher can put out a 
uh, uh, this this library of named field types, which right now we're thinking of as a schema. But I'm saying that if we if we add one extra layer of indirection there, so instead we have named field types that um, uh, so you know you can have a, a field that has an, a num con constraints. Um, it has a particular description. It has, you know, this is this validated measure. It has all of this metadata that's associated to that. So now when I'm a data producer, I'm creating a data package. I don't have to copy all of that information into my field definition. I just reference out to that library and I say, use this field definition from this library, um, if that makes sense. Um, and so I think that that ends up performing the same function as what we're using these uh, schemas for, but it, it makes it, it, it gives us a little bit more power, um, and, and flexibility. Um, and it also, uh, keeps the guarantee that our schemas, uh, match up, um, with our, uh, data. Um, and then we, you know, we can still accommodate the extra case when we're with bad formatted schemas, but I think it's nice to have schemas match the data because then if I'm a, um, a metadata tool going into, and, and I want to know what's, what's in this data package, um, all I have to do is read the schema and I know all of the fields that are there. I don't have to open the data file, which might be a remote resource and stuff like that. I have all of that. I, I know exactly the fields that are in my data package and it's local. Yeah, so just to react to that, I, what I'm trying to figure out is if your proposal stands in the way of this proposal here. And I think you would re very much like the schema to describe the data exactly, while there's other use cases where you don't have that. And I think from a data um, consumer, you can see if field match is provided. And if it's not exact, but partial, then you know, oh, there's actually maybe more data in there. And maybe you want to raise an error for that one if you really want that. But I also very much agree that it would be very useful to work on a field by field level to have like very uh, atomic definitions for certain fields and release that as a library of things. That is what we do in, in biodiversity informatics. We have, for example, a definition mm -hmm. of scientific name, and that comes with a number of assertions that is associated with that. And then in your uh, yeah, in your data package, the ideal situation is like, yeah, I have a table schema, but it has this field, and it has this definition over there to pull that information in. Currently, there's no mechanism for that in data package. And I think that would be useful to have, but I think it works well with also being able to allow more flexibility in, in schemas and data because that is also a common use case. So that is what I'm trying to figure out is like, I very much agree with like being able to define something at a field specific level as in this is a country, meaning it has all these associations, but does that stand in the way of allowing partial, for example, for um, for table schemas? Uh, Dan, did you want to contribute to that? Yeah, I, I, I agree. They're like separate features because I think if we only did typed definitions, that's like a loss of functionality in some ways, or increase in friction or something. Because for the like in the use case I'm thinking of, like it is there is this assumption that the name is, if there's this name, it's the same on any data set that uses it. So requiring people to define a type and then assign that to all these fields that have the same name is is kind of like a bigger hurdle than just like having a central data dictionary. And while well, there might be some, some columns that are unique to this data set and they're just not gonna be defined for now, but we have this common, yeah, I think that I think they're both useful. I, I, something that just occurred to me is that it's it would be easier to implement what you're talking about if the structure was slightly different, but because the type is just a you know a string, and then all the configuration or options for that type are at the same level, it's not like you could have like a reference in your field. You know, like if the fields were were an object instead of an array and the key was the name, then 
it could just be a key to a reference to your definition somewhere else in your JSON, but because it doesn't because it's like pair out because they're at the same level, yeah, I think with the way the the schema works, the way the spec works now, that would be a pretty big change to implement as I understand it. Yeah, got it. Yeah, I think I think that makes sense. If this is a if if this is a common use where there are, I, I guess you could call them sort of global global variables that are needing to be standardized across um, data sets, um, and and everyone has agreed to use the same name. Um, I can see how the that schema definition makes sense. I, I would still say the the having um, having schemas with um, or or attaching attaching schemas to data for which there are more fields in my data than the schema um, that that still makes me a little bit un uncomfortable. I mean, I, I guess that's something we can Not allow ideal, just to sure. give all of the options. Um, but I would I, I guess I would say that I would want um, uh, maybe this goes hand in hand with sort of what Phil was talking about in terms of being able to combine um, the partial schema. So if we have the the schema be an array um, definition so we can put in multiple schemas in there just so that we we're not in the situation where we're sort of creating this this trap where I, I, I want to use this external schema, but I have extra fields in my data um, that are not um, <clears throat> that that um, that that are not in that external schema, and so I I want to be able to start combining my schemas straight away if that makes sense. I'm getting. I'm getting you still muted. After we have this uh, approach for uh, like partial subset, etc., schemas combining schemas might be kind of like a next uh, uh, step. And uh, if uh, kind of like schema kind of like a container for fields, it might be like more maintainable. So you have uh, uh, so it's not uh, only like one uh, mapping for all the uh, fields based on name. It's uh, inside the like schema schema for this schema for that and then for example we uh, allow to provide uh, several schemas uh, for one resource for example for one table It's interesting what you're writing, Phil. Apologies, Sarah. I, I know some people, some uh, meeting chairs don't actually like discussion in the thing because I, I, I'm not sure. Have you ever pronounced on whether you like us to discuss in the chat or whether you prefer that we don't and raise our hands instead? I think it's your space, so it's really like as you wish to do it. I also like conversation to happen parallel. So, I mean, really, this okay. is my house house it is your house as well so <laughs> there may be an age well. cor correlation with people who prefer one or the other <laughs> i don't like it when other people do it but when i have something i want to type i like to type it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, just um, yeah, again. Yeah, so yeah, because um, we're getting closer to the hour. Um, let me just share again. So basically, my, my. Uh, if you can see it, uh, basically, uh, it's now kind of like us mentioned like way easier than uh, the beginning so if you just uh, just summarizing if you can have some time like this week or next week to um see like um what exactly maybe a blocker for you to uh, finish uh, this pull request so maybe uh, if you just against uh, just and you want to state it like more uh clearly so please it will be great so we will try to uh finish them by the end of this month. And then um, as, yes, uh, we, like we added uh, this new two issues to the final uh, milestone regarding categorical data. Uh, please check if, if, it's, if, if it was like uh, correct or uh, issues. And uh, basically, yeah, I think maybe the next call, maybe it's like Sarah, Sarah decide uh, maybe in, in like in a month, like after. Uh, probably we'll spend uh, discussing like versioning because I'll prepare more detailed ideas on this. And I hope we start uh, by the by the meeting, uh, like discussing it on GitHub. So as we know, uh, this call we spent like uh, half an hour on, on these issues. Probably I expect that next time we will just spend the same amount of time on the versioning. Um, I just started on this and the current idea if we can uh, kind of like uh, use a standard uh, schema uh, field like for uh, profiles. So currently it's uh, based on this one. So there is a draft pull request. Uh, if you can also take a look on on uh, on this one, it's uh, let me share. But it's on, it's it's just the beginning. So if you have something like you know to uh, propose like before, not not review, just propose maybe just to bootstrap, um, please. Uh, you're welcome. And uh, I think it will be the main focus for the next call. All right. Yeah, thanks, Evgeny. Uh, Peter, you wanted to quickly react to that? Yeah, so currently this is a draft, So, but you're planning to release this as a non-draft PR and then everybody's notified, correct? Um, yeah, so uh, by the next call, yeah, I'll prepare everything from my side but because it's now currently it's uh, like everything is up on the air so if you have uh, kind of like ideas to straight like now maybe mm -hmm. it's uh, it feels already wrong for you so just jump jump okay. in and, yeah. you know help me <laughs> yeah yeah that, that, that is one thing i've noticed with certain issues like for example with the field match there is an initial proposal and people vote and then there is a suggestion and it turns into a whole other direction, but all the votes remain, um, then it's a bit unclear if, uh, yeah, if people are actually agreeing with, with the thing that was proposed or not. Uh, we had a little bit of that problem with um, defining a first name, last name or family name, uh, given name. Um, and it might be the same with the, the, the field match, but I also don't know how to solve that. Um, yeah, yeah, because I I tried to like moderate and, and count what uh, it was a problem for me. So I think the reason of this uh, that we currently just solving like five years scope of uh, issues and going forward, uh, it will be, you know, kind of like I think just uh, maybe creating new pull request for for like big change or whatever for now uh, as we're doing kind of like draft now then release in two months uh, uh, i think the solution should be just uh, people um, just review the specs like uh, when it's done like as as, as, as the whole and uh, just if something just you know went 
mistakenly like the wrong way someone voted the different thing we just revert change uh, whatever so it's uh, it's uh, for now I think it's uh, this way yeah I think in the future it might make sense to actually assign reviewers to to pull requests and yeah, you can yeah, re-ask them to review um, but yeah I mean for for now with the technical depth that we have it, this goes a lot faster Great. Um, is there anything else that we need to discuss um, again in this call? Um, no, no, I think um, nothing related to the other package. Yeah, good. Um, I also want to give everyone here a chance also if there's something that they want to bring up. Um, they would, I mean, there's not a lot of time to discuss any other item, but we could also add that to the agenda for the next call. Peter, yes. Yeah, I just wanted to say for the people who are using R, I'm planning to release a frictionless 1.1.0 pretty soon. There's a lot of new features in there. Not all that have been suggested, but uh, so yeah, that is probably coming. I'll uh, link to the change log in the chat. Great, that's exciting. Okay, on that beautiful note, um, the only other thing that I wanted to share with you, well, two things actually. So the next call is going to be on the 25th of April. So we're back on the last Thursday of the month. This one was kind of an exception because of the Easter holiday. We, we thought it might be better to organize it this week. Uh, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention, so Romina already said that, um, and we also wrote it in the chat, but at the moment we are running kind of like... Uh, test using section sessions for uh, open data editor. So if you know anyone uh, with a non-technical background that would be interested in taking part in those, uh, we're running them for another week, if I'm correct, Romina. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, get in touch uh, well directly with Romina here. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it from us. Um, I want to say- Did you, you say again. anyone with a technical or a non-technical non background? Non-technical. <laughs> non-technical non is preferred? Exactly. So I think virtually I anyone to... on this call is excluded, basically. No, no, yes, and I you, you don't qualify, no. But yeah, so if you know anyone, yeah, just, just get in touch. Um, thanks again, everyone. This is like the highlight of my month every time this discussion. So um, thank for contributing to this. Uh, great work. We're getting closer uh, to the first draft and also closer to the final V2. So that's all very exciting. Um, Unless there's any last thought that you want to share. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, and yeah, I'll see you again next month. Thanks for that. Thank you. Bye, all. Bye. Yeah. Bye.